everyone, and welcome to St. Louis University's School of Science and Engineering Town Hall. Just want to go through a few housekeeping items before we begin. This is a webinar format. Dean Triplett will be giving a presentation on the state of the college, and then that will be followed by a question and answer session. If you think of a question during Dean Triplett's presentation, please feel free to submit it via the chat below. Um, we're happy you could join us this evening. This is the first of its kind with Dean Gregory Triplett. We hope it will be one of many connections with our science and engineering alums. My name is Sue Ratz, and I have the honor and privilege of introducing you to Dean Triplett tonight. So Gregory E. Triplett Jr. joined St. Louis University about 14 months ago as Dean of the newly formed School of Science and Engineering. He brought more than 20 years of academic experience to his position. In the short time he's been here, he's focused on expanding interdisciplinary research, academic programs, industry partnerships, and community outreach. Dean Triplett holds a PhD in electrical and computer engineering from Georgia Tech, an MS from Florida State, and a BS from Florida A&M. He's received numerous awards for his work in teaching, research, and mentoring. His research focuses on nanomanufacturing, advanced computation, and photonics for precision imaging. And without any more from me, I'll hand it over to Dean Triplett. Thank you, Sue, um, for the introduction. Um, thank you all for your time and uh, attention this evening. Um, throughout my first year as Dean, I've spoken with many of our alumni and have heard firsthand the passion and pride each of you have for aviation technology and engineering programs. Uh, I hope the presentation tonight uh, will show you some strong trajectory of your alma mater, the progress that we've made, the potential for our future, uh, and our commitment to positively impacting St. Louis and the region we serve. Our students are bright, uh, creative, they're driven, and when equipped with a St. Louis University education, will make the change that we believe the world needs. So we're honored to have uh, the excellent faculty who are dedicated to teaching and mentoring these students while simultaneously pushing creative possibilities through innovative research. Our alumni are an important part of the School of Science and Engineering community. Uh, and we rely on your involvement to ensure a strong position for our school. So I invite you to visit campus, to take part in the alumni mentoring program, and to stay informed via publications and social media channels. As the new dean, the inaugural dean, I also ask that you include the School of Science and Engineering, your philanthropy. We need your support and the strength of our incredible alumni to elevate our programs and to provide excellent education in science, um, engineering, and aviation. Um, the aviation science and engineering programs are rooted in an incredible history, and we'll talk about that tonight. And the legacy and potential of these programs really does rely on the generous investment of our entire community. Um, so before we get started, I just want again, thank you for attending and, um, we, we can just kind of jump right into it. Um, for those who haven't connected with the school, um, the, the School of Science Engineering was formed as an experiment by the university. They wanted to bring together these desperate group, uh, uh, um, groups that are very different uh, together to create an opportunity for us to do some really interesting things, interdisciplinary research specifically, and to provide a really high quality education for our students. Um, you can see here that many of the programs that existed came from aviation, uh, previously parks, um, engineering, as well as a few groups in the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, I guess the entire experiment was really designed to embed um, a, a spirit of entrepreneurial uh, opportunities, making sure that we can develop industry-sponsored projects. Um, all of this will have an, um, an incredible mark on the St. Louis community that we serve. I am hopeful that this experiment can really be catalyzed into what I think is going to make us distinctive from other universities. And throughout this presentation, I believe you'll see the evidence 
of that coming to fruition. Um, so when I joined the school uh, 14 months ago, it was clear to me uh, that there was a lot that we could rely on. I mean, there was, you know, not necessarily a collaborative culture. Many of our students had transformative experiences, but it was important that we create a compelling vision. Um, and the vision for the school as I see it is excellence with a measurable impact on local, national, and global communities. And at the root of that would be a strong academic experience. In order to do that, you know, I've crafted a plan over this past year and have been working with all of the stakeholders uh, to really take a very uh, strong leap forward to do the things that I don't necessarily think have been part of um, the previous conversation, and that is honoring the past. As I've traveled throughout this country, I've run into some really passionate Parks alum. And I think that there's been some, you know, some disconnection. And it really comes down to whether we will focus on the right things. Um, so I've done my homework, you know, over the past couple of years, realizing that we have a really strong uh, community of alumni, about 15,000. Um, I've met with some, some alum who've done some really great things, you know, over their career. And what I get from them is, is passion. I see that they have, you know, served as pioneers in their field. Um, and this is something that we should honor. And so for this past year, uh, we've developed uh, two things that I think are important for you to, to really sort of embrace is, is our attempt to, uh, to sort of build the science and engineering program the right way. We develop an operational framework for success. Uh, and in that success, we focused on some really important threads, and that include inclusive excellence, which gives everyone an opportunity to be successful. It includes striving for program distinction. We want all of our programs to provide a high quality interdisciplinary education. And some of the other things which are really important, just as an academic institution, we need to improve our policies and practices. We need to make sure that we are fundraising to expand our resources. But, you know, the reality is, is that we're providing the workforce for the future. And with that, we've adopted some high impact practices and community of practice to ensure that our students are well prepared. We are seeking and we've actually secured many public private partnerships and we're growing our program so that the students have meaningful experiences to be prepared for the workforce. So that's on one hand, this is what guides us in all of our decisions. The second thing we've done is we've completed a strategic plan. It is a very bold plan. And it focuses on the, I would consider to be the five important pillars for science and engineering education. And that includes recruiting students that can further drive what I consider to be this technological advancement being centered at the heart of the United States. It includes retaining our students. We do a really good job of keeping our students in the queue. And so we're going to push the envelope even further. And we have declared uh, some new expectations for keeping students in our programs and pushing them into engineering and science careers. It includes expanding research, providing new resources, and more importantly, enhancing the education of a St. Louis University, um, a St. Louis University, which is centered in the heart of what I consider to be the mecca of a lot of things that are happening. Um, what we really need is your help. I just wanna sort of emphasize that leveraging alumni networks has to be the most important attribute in engineering and science. It doesn't necessarily mean um, that we need to uh, sort of focus on giving, and I think financial giving is important, but I think the networks, connecting our students with opportunities in the workplace is something that we just cannot compromise. We need to be able to do that. So I really encourage you to do that. Uh, let's activate uh, your communities. I've also learned that we don't necessarily do a good job of telling our story very well. So this year, spend a lot of time and effort, you know, meeting with our faculty and understanding the successes that they are, that, you know, that they've achieved at St. Louis. And we launched for the first time that I'm aware of a magazine that really captured who we are and what we do. I had the opportunity to meet with Gene Krantz, who is an amazing person. And um, he sort of revealed his experiences at St. Louis U when he was here. And he talked about the impact of being able to build stuff in his words. Um, so we took that to heart. I think that we are looking at all of our academic programs and you will see later on, some of our investments will be placed towards creating these opportunities for students to, to actually build things. And that's how you learn, you learn by doing. 
Um, we focus on our faculty because this is the pathway forward. We have an excellent group of faculty, about 106. Uh, we have a significant number of uh, women who also uh, are faculty in the school, which is really important. I'm not sure if people are aware of this, but uh, we have about 36% women in the school. Uh, and that represents, you know, the top 25 institutes in the country. Um, believe it or not, the national average is right around 18%. So we do very well in terms of exposing women to opportunities in science and engineering. We also wanted to make sure that we recognize the legacy programs. Aviation will be 100 years in a few. Um, it's the first program ever. And I could tell you some stories. You know, we can talk about this at homecoming, but I went and visited um, Embry-Riddle. Uh, it was maybe about a month ago. And they are a very large program. It is a machine. They do very well educating, you know, their future uh, pilots. Um, but they're in an extremely interesting situation that St. Louis University does not find itself in. So that they're space locked. They actually have the Atlantic Ocean to the to the east. It has the Gulf to the west. And so we just don't have that space lock opportunity that, you know, we don't have that space chance like they do. So one of the reasons why I think maybe they have a campus in Arizona. Suffice to say, we are in a very strong position to continue the legacy of parks. And this year we had a record class of uh, new students, and I expect that to continue moving forward. Um, this year we invested in activities uh, that supports our growth. A couple of things that I wanted to mention to you is that we didn't have any endowed professorships in the School of Science and Engineering. So we created three this year. One is named after Oliver Parks. Uh, this was uh, a, a very long and enduring process, but I was able to get it done. Uh, we scraped some resources together to create a, a Parks endowment that sits with the dean. That's really important because anyone who becomes dean um, in the foreseeable future, all of them will have an attachment to Oliver Parks because we want to make sure that we memorialize um, his contribution to St. Louis University. We also created two additional ones, uh, which was the Eugene, uh, Eugene Krantz Endowed Professorship. And we also recharacterized the Bamboo Endowment to ensure that they had a more broader perspective of what we consider to be sustainability. We announced uh, nine awardees this year and 33% of our external research expenditures were attributed to endowed professors. We also identified some research themes that we believe are gonna be critical for this nation. And those are safeguarding national security, poverty and hunger, all the things that we are focused on in the School of Science and Engineering are aligned with the Jesuit mission. It's about the greater good. It's about advancing humanity. And we find that our students are really challenged with, you know, sol solving some of these con complex problems. And they're very excited. They're very excited about putting what they learn in the classroom into practice. It creates a really op a good opportunity for our students to conduct convergent research. And because these themes align with the university's mission, it makes it so that it is a very vibrant community. We're actually leading the university in terms of research and new endeavors. And I'm very pleased to do that, uh, to take part in that. This year, we hired 11 new faculty in science and engineering. I don't remember the last time we hired that many faculty. Um, it gives you an idea that we're growing and we've recruited the top faculty from all the corners of the planet. We have some who are international. We have some from our, who are from uh, top R1 institutions. We're making a difference. We're bringing people to St. Louis. They're excited about the opportunities in the region, and we look forward to continuing to hire new faculty uh, in the future. Some of the innovative programs, institutes, and centers that we created this year are, are listed here. Uh, point to note that we are investing in the next class of 2030. We've created a partnership with the St. Louis University School of Education to create a joint center called iScore. What it essentially allows us to do is to create a platform for which we can expose science, engineering, and aviation careers to kids who are as young as sixth grade. Uh, we believe in spreading the goodwill is what we're supposed to do. I'm very excited about the future of that center. We've also created a joint program with the School of Business to create a Master's of Science in Entrepreneurship. What's really interesting about this program is that you have to have a STEM degree in order to be eligible for the program. 
we have new masters and PhD programs in engineering that we've created. It used to be a general engineering degree. That's no longer the case. Uh, we're creating discipline specific programs that is going to help with faculty recruiting and student recruiting. Um, we renamed Earth and Atmospheric Sciences to reflect what is current uh, and what is pressing, and that is the Earth, environmental, and geospatial realm. We see a lot of growth in that from the Taylor Geospatial Institute. We have some new department chairs, and we created a, a number of research cores that allows our research faculty to have access to the best facilities uh, in the city. Um, we're also inculcating a data culture. Uh, these are just you know, some examples of where we are. Uh, you can see that on the research expenditures, we've taken some real, you know, large steps to invest in our faculty, and that's beginning to pay off. Uh, in terms of our undergraduate and graduate students, you also see that there is a growth in enrollment as well as courses taught. And in terms of the number of faculty, I imagine that we are also going to continue for the foreseeable future to hire new faculty as, um, as other faculty retire or move on or change institutions. Um, we are still St. Louis University. The focus is just going to be translating the research, which is really important and is at the forefront of technology. We're going to be bringing that to the classroom because we want our students to have the best experience and we want them to understand the relevance of the theory that they learn in the classroom. Here is some idea of how the, the landscape is changing. In fall 21, you can see that we had a small number of international students uh, and over the past several years, we've seen significant interest from the international community in St. Louis. I do not know exactly what's going to happen in the next coming years, uh, because that depends on a lot of things. It depends on the number of visas that are um, provided. Um, but our interest is in domestic workforce, and that is something we're going to focus on moving forward. Uh, we're also launching some new centers. I, I find this to be very interesting, uh, you know, to uh, to be on the forefront is that we're creating a quantum information science and engineering program. Uh, and these are really at the top of everyone's brain when you think about national security, when you think about cybersecurity and being able to translate data into information. Um, we've just hired four new faculty who are in electrical and computer engineering. We had another in physics and they are you know, they're very accomplished researchers, but they're thinking about the next generation of data infusion. And what does that look like? Will we have the tools to be able to process this information? Fortunately, we're in a, we're in a city that has that is rich in resources and transportation, but also in intelligence. The National Geospatial Agency, which is literally a few miles down the road, we're already forming those partnerships. And I see those partnerships will only expand and so St. Louis University geographically is in a really good position, but in terms of our expertise and intellect, we're in a really strong position to really provide an extremely advanced education. That's going to do well for us reputationally. Uh, the Taylor Geospatial Institute is an effort that focuses on all things geospatial. Uh, we have some programs that we launched this year, and you can see that the, the programs in uh, science and engineering are at the center. Uh, Earth and atmospheric sciences and aviation are looking at some of the crises that we experience with transportation and also looking at some of these technologies like uh, navigation and tracking. I'm very excited about the future, and I think if you're looking at where does geospatial touch, and it touches everything, public health, it touches uh, national defense, it touches all things that you do. If you actually use a Waze, that's essentially geospatial information. We're actually going to be on the forefront of all things that are developed, all the things that impact society, everything that impacts everybody's lives. There's going to be a lot of activity at St. Louis University. There's going to be a lot of activity in the School of Science and Engineering. So again, we're really moving the needle forward. Uh, here's an example of uh, some additional work in our Water Institute. Um, they've done some really exciting things, including looking at the origin of microplastics in Missouri. Um, I have to tell you that this the mission of St. Louis University is for the greater good. And our faculty, as evidenced by this effort, have taken that to heart. So there's a lot to be proud of. I think there's a lot that you can talk about as a St. Louis University alum. And it also gives you some opportunities to connect our, our faculty and our students to your networks. And it also gives you something that I think that you can share with, um, with people who are outside of your network. 
Uh, our core research areas in science and engineering, this is the last research slide, but it essentially include things that I think are really important for realizing our mission. Um, the gambit is there, drug discovery and drug delivery, uh, analytical chemistry, environmental sciences and water resources, human computer interaction. We're also looking at you know, some of the artificial intelligence tools and machine learning. We have this, we have this great uh, diversity of academic programs and combined with the research programs, we have students who are absolutely performing uh, very well. They're writing uh, papers, they're winning awards. We're creating a really nice further environment for these young minds to be shaped. So interacting with alumni is something that they can strongly benefit from. You've been there, you've done that. You can give them advice. You can participate in our mentoring program. Plenty of opportunities for you to participate. So I encourage you to do so. We're investing in infrastructure and I'm excited about this as well. This is one of my first projects and it's, uh, I think the construction begins very soon, but it's a design space for our students across the School of Science and Engineering where they can work on real world projects, specifically those that are sponsored by university and industry. Uh, it enables the students to work together to pursue new ideas, you know, apply for um, patents, and it is a pretty sizable space, about 3,000 square feet. Um, it's gonna be one of the, the best spaces on campus. Uh, but we're not done there as well. We also have plans in the works for a new building. Uh, this building is going to be about 62,000 square feet. If you're familiar with campus and if you come to homecoming, we can show you what it looks like, but it's going to connect McDonnell Douglas Hall with um, with Oliver Hall, and it's going to create some new spaces for faculty offices, new spaces for research labs. It's going to create some conference spaces for us to host events and to bring industry closer. We are in uh, workforce development mode, and we want to make sure that we're preparing the next generation. And having top facilities is a big part of that. I hope that we can actually have this building online in 2030. Some of the other things that we've accomplished this year, we received recognition um, from the American Society for Engineering Education. Uh, this recognition program sort of, you know, it sort of promotes those who are, excuse me, recognize those who are promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, the St. Louis University is a really, is, is an interesting space because of all those communities around St. Louis. And we've been recognized among some of the top institutions in the country for our efforts to promote uh, inclusivity. Um, I'll kind of round this out as we as we sort of prepare for Q&A, but these are just some metrics of all the things that uh, we were able to accomplish this year in my first year as dean. We saw an increase in research expenditures, about $3 million, which is roughly a 50% increase. We increased the number of proposals that were submitted by 35%. There is a lot of activity. I expect this to continue. We raised about $2 million this year from gifts uh, from our alumni, and we're very grateful. Um, and we hope that, again, we can provide some resources for our students to participate and travel. Uh, we also had an, a, a significant increase in the number of degrees awarded. Uh, we had large increases in the number of students who are participating in the career fair. Uh, the list goes on and on. I want you to, to really feel confident that uh, St. Louis University is recognizing the legacy of, uh, of the past, is moving forward with creating new opportunities for the future. And um, it's, I think there's a lot to be proud of as an alum. A couple of takeaways, I just wanna make sure that we're, you know, that I'm sending the right message. Um, the School of Science and Eng Engineering is expanding. Um, we are pursuing excellence and that requires a collaborative spirit and a compelling vision. We are maintaining our identity as St. Louis U. We are a Jesuit institution and we are conducting research that actually focuses on the greater good. These are our priorities. Our expenditures increased significantly last year and we're supporting new endeavors that is focused on the fringe work that is truly transformative and impactful. Uh, and my last takeaway is, is my call for your support. And that is um, the engagement with alumni is critical for us to to even be successful at any level at any level and investing in the careers of others is is a great way to give back and so uh, with that i encourage everyone to follow us on linkedin we normally put our stories on linkedin 
So if you ever want to know what's happening with the school, we're very active in social media. This is just a way for you to connect and so you can hear what your what your former uh what your former school is is uh is doing. Um I think Sue we will sort of take some questions now. Yes, I am. Okay, here I am. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stop sharing. There we go. Okay. So I just want to take it this time and encourage anybody to ask questions use the using the chat function below. Um so just to get the Q&A started. What has surprised you since you joined St. Louis University? Uh, you know, it's, I would say, um, I would say that the students are, are really, they're really bright. I mean, they are really bright. And I, you know, I worked at public institutions, you know, I, several public institutions, and there's a great spread in terms of the readiness for higher education. You have some students who whose high schools where they probably didn't have science and engineering classes. And the first time that they uh, learned anything about chemistry was, you know, first year chemistry 101. I don't necessarily I haven't seen that so far in my first year. These students are ready. They understand what research is. They understand scientific method. Now, some of them know how to well before they get here. I mean, they understand how to program. They're ready for research in year one. And that caught me by surprise. Um, some of our students are extremely innovative. They participate in all of our competitions. And frankly, I actually don't want to mess this up, if I can be so frank. Uh, as dean, my job is to make sure that we create opportunities. I just don't want to limit them. And I have found that to be a pleasant surprise, that the students are very well prepared, very well prepared you know, for higher education. And they are, they're really pushing our faculty hard, which I think is, is, is something that I embrace is believe it or not, it's easy to recruit faculty when they see how smart your students are. I mean, it makes it a whole lot easier. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. So this one is regarding the master of science and entrepreneurship and how much of the language and fundamentals of classical business are included in that. <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. So I, I believe the curriculum is set up so it's 50% uh, science and, uh, excuse me, technology-based and 50% business. Um, I don't know the curriculum offhand, but 50% of the class are taught by the School of Business here. Um, the, the degree actually has a, 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 there's a certain code that is associated with every major that exists in the country. Uh, so the, the SIP code could have been a business SIP code or could have been a STEM SIP code. It's actually a STEM degree, which is really important. Um, if in fact it were a business zip code, it would be equivalent to a standard entrepreneurship program that you would see in any school of business. But because there's such an orientation with science, it actually comes with a science sort of designation. So that's that provides a, a, a distinction with other programs that exist across the country. Great. Um, I know you talked about this some, but what opportunities for innovation do you see at St. Louis University? You know, I get this question a lot. And I think I think that um, St. Louis in general, St. Louis, the region, has a very rich history, right? I, I think going back to whether they chose rail or water, they chose water and they lost the battle with Chicago, right? So, so there's been sort of this resurgence of technology uh, in the region. So we see these, you know, T-Rex and Cortex, there's these big incubators where you know, they're now investing in companies and they're looking for talent. And so one of the things that we've done is we've tried to tap into that talent base that exists locally and create opportunities for students to really participate. And that requires that we actually look at our curriculum. And so I think the innovative, the innovative charge here is to make sure that our curriculum prepares students for really helping companies get off the ground. You know, I went to Georgia Tech and there was actually Tech Square, which is about a block away from main campus. And you would always see startups, you know, they would transplant to Tech Square and they would recruit students from Georgia Tech and they would be working very hard to make these, you know, companies a little bit more vibrant. Um, I see the same thing happening here. It's the exact same thing. The, I think the difference between Georgia Tech and St. Louis University is that Georgia Tech is big. You know, Georgia Tech had 10,000, you know, engineers and computer scientists, and we don't have that many. It's one of the reasons why I want us to grow. Um, I don't know if there are any Wash U people on this call, so I'm going to be very careful here. 80% uh, of our students stay in the region. They graduate from St. Louis University. 
And at WashU, they have a really strong engineering program. They have a strong medical program as well. But they actually attract students from all over the nation. That also means that when they graduate, they go back home. And so at least when you think about it from a commerce perspective and a tax base, St. Louis University is the school you actually want to grow. Because if you're interested in stimulating growth in the region, you actually need people who are going to come here and stay. Uh, so those are the kinds of things that I think about, right? You know, can we create an innovative curricu curriculum here that couples well with the growth in technology that exists in the region? And can we do it in a way that allows students who want to be here stay in the region? All right, great. Um, I just want to make sure everybody's putting their questions in the the chat. And also, people love your shirt. <laughs> um, just can you maybe talk about it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so I, it, I've been trying to connect with the Parks alum. I think it's it's probably for those who are on this call, maybe they know that. Uh, and I think that you know I'm trying to rebuild bridges. Uh, and so, so I've traveled to. Uh, Wisconsin, you know, uh, to meet with some of the alumni. I've done, uh, I focus quite a bit on making sure that we honor the legacy and we bed parks, which is why we created a parks endowment. Um, so I managed to look through um, a 1974 yearbook. I can't remember exactly what year it was, but 70s is about right. And I looked and said, I, I like that. <laughs> I like that logo. So I sent a request up the chain to the university and said, I know this does not meet your brand standard. Uh, but can I have, can I use this? Uh, and can I create, you know, some shirts that recognize as parks? And uh, so they allowed me to use it for this one time. So I actually bought a box of t-shirts. I can't remember exactly how many, uh, but I, I thought I would wear it on the call today because we'll be handing some of these out if you come to homecoming. <laughs> so so we'll have some, this gives you an opportunity to relive. It's actually quite comfy. I can tell you that it's very comfortable. So if you're interested in and saw cotton being on your on your skin. This is actually a good one to have. All right. How can alums engage with current students, faculty, and staff in the School of Science and Engineering? Show up. <laughs> I would say you can catch any airline if you want. If it comes to St. Louis, uh, all jokes aside, if you're not in the region, I think people can connect virtually. There's a great opportunity we have because of all the teleconferencing. Uh, our students really want to hear from alum. They have a lot of questions. They want to know. Am I in the right major? What kind of class should I focus on? Um, you know, I'm interested in particle flow. Where are the major, you know, what are the industries that I can work in? Like students really think about uh, workforce very differently than I think I did when I was growing up. It was about getting the training and being told what to do. Uh, now students are trying to decide early on, where should I go? You know, what angle can I take? Where's the best opportunity for me to create my own company or to do something, you know, that's really cool and useful? Uh, so to me, I think alumni have a great opportunity to weigh in. They can they can really channel their expertise and their energy into those who are basically sponges. They're just looking to absorb information. We have a mentoring program called the Mentor Collective, right? And I, I think that there's a great opportunity if you want to interact with students and you don't have a lot of time, but you know you have some hours that you can you can share. Uh, that is a great opportunity uh, for for alumni to get connected. In terms of the staff and faculty, I mean, you know, we're always available. So I think that, you know, you can come down to campus. We can have some meetings. We can invite you to campus and, and have a special lecture. If you're in the community, if you're if you're in the workforce now, you want to recruit our students, I think there's a great way that you can come and, you know, you can share what opportunities exist at your companies. I think there's a laundry list of things that we can do. And I can give you a contact. <laughs> so we can share contacts with folks if they're looking for some connectivity. All right. Oh. All right. So where can alums follow or keep up with the School of Science and Engineering? So we do have uh, we have social media channels. Uh, I, I'll uh, I'll ask that uh, my team put that in there. But we actually have an I think we have a um, a Instagram channel. We have a Facebook. We have a Twitter. I'm sorry, X X. We have an X channel and uh, we also have LinkedIn. Uh, I don't, I don't, I, did I, am I missing any? I don't think so. Yeah. But those are, those are the channels that we use where we can share, you know, uh, updates on students who win awards. You know, there's competitions like the Billiken, like um, the Billiken team, um, even some of the more focused professional societies like the 
ASE, you know, the, the American Society for Civil Engineers, they have competitions that they join. We also share news on our other groups that are not a member of a specific domain, like the Society of Women Engineers, uh, Hispanic and Professional Engineers, and also the National Society of Black Engineers. And we share all of those on our channels. We want you to know what our students are doing. So following us on those media channels is, is the best way to see what's happening in real time. All right. So what events do you plan to attend this semester with or and also how can people invite you to attend an event? Oh, uh, yeah. So just send me a note, uh, send me an email. I, I, I'm always uh, looking for opportunities to engage. Whenever I travel in the region, I usually reach out to Advancement to figure out are there any alumni in the, in the region that we can connect with. Uh, I'll be traveling to conferences to support our students. Usually I travel with them for one day and I meet with them over dinner just to, to see how uh, the, the program is going, what kind of uh, struggles that they have. If they have praise reports, I don't always, I'm not always looking for, you know, problems. I'm also looking for great things that I can share with alumni. Um, so that's something that is scheduled throughout the year. We do have homecoming, which is coming up. Uh, I think that's September 27th, I think. Um, yeah, it's a great opportunity. You know, we'll we'll obviously have some events that we can share. Um, we can share notes and um, and we can connect them with the community. So, and but you know, again, I, I am I'm absolutely available uh, to meet with alum. It's always great to hear how St. Louis University has impacted them. Everyone has a different story, and I learn so much about the school uh, every time I meet with someone. Great. So, what's the best way? to support the School of Science and Engineering in the future? Uh, I think, I mean, I, I tend to, I tend to uh, sort of narrow it down into three ways. We need your time, we need your talents, or your money, right? And, you know, I think there is ways that you can, you can pick and choose what suits your flavor. Um, we have alumni who want to come back and they want to participate in some of the clubs. They want to help students with, you know, design competitions. That's your talent. If you want, you can actually, you know, you can share your time. You can meet with students who are interested in learning more about the field. You can also spread the good news about what's happening at St. Louis University. So if anyone is interested in talking about St. Louis as you interact in your own communities, you can talk about St. Louis University when you go to a local high school or when you go to a middle school or if you go to an elementary school or even your church. I mean, there is definitely ways where you can help your alma mater move the needle forward. It doesn't always have to be financially but we do accept checks. And that's also helpful because we actually have student organizations who rely on donors to help them travel to conferences and to participate in competitions. And so I always like to look at it as, it's almost like it's a it's a selection. You know, it's, you have the opportunity to do, you know, any of the three or all three. Um, I'm very interested in moving the needle forward. I see great things that are happening in the region. Uh, we have a really strong alumni pool. The people are extremely accomplished who come from St. Louis U. Very, very accomplished. And I think they should share their lessons. I think they should share their expertise. Um, and so there are multiple ways of giving back. And I think all of those are something that I look forward to. All right. What's your favorite slew tradition? What is my favorite slew tradition? Uh, I don't have one. Um, I, I have gone to Humphreys. I don't know if that's a, a tradition per se, but I, I have been I there. Think so. Okay. I think so. Is Well, yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. I, I think that's the closest. That's the closest that I, I've been here 14 months. Ask me next year. Okay. Maybe, okay. I'll, we'll maybe I'll have again. a favorite. We'll ask again next time. Fair, fair enough. All right. So how are you an advocate for students? Well, I can tell you one thing. When it comes to student orgs, uh, that is that is where I have really cut my teeth uh, as a leader. Um, we created a graduate student association this year. That didn't exist. Um, we created a uh, student success fund for student organizations. That didn't exist. And so I'm trying to figure out how do we best support our students? They're very bright. They just need direction. And so we've actually channeled a lot of our energy and make sure making sure that they get the support that they need. We've expanded our program for undergraduate research. It's called FIRE. Uh, it's interdisciplinary research experiences. And we expanded that significantly to make sure students can actually apply what they learn in the classroom 
uh, to projects because that's how you learn. You learn by doing. All the things that impact the student experience, whether it's social activities, competitions, showing up in the classroom. I've done that a number of times to meet with students and say, hey, what's going on? What, what do you need? Um, the infrastructure that we talked about, you know, the new uh, collaboration spaces. I mean, that was a heavy lift getting that done. Uh, proposing a new building, which is extremely ambitious and getting that going. There was a lot of inertia there that is going to benefit the student experience. And so we're looking at, you know, some, you know, the ways that we know the student, we know what students are asking for. Let's put it that way. We know what they're asking for. And so we're really tapping into that. We're tapping into all that they can offer and helping us become a better school and a better university. Right. If anybody else has any questions, I'm just going to say, put them in the chat because we're, we're kind of winding down on questions a little bit, but um where do you see the School of Science and Engineering fitting in at St. Louis University? I anticipate in the future that we are going to be uh, the leader in research. We're going to be um, the leader in terms of uh, academic pre preparation. We're going to have top ranked programs. Uh, and we're going to be the largest school on campus. I can see it. I understand very much what is necessary um, when we think about national competitiveness. It requires that we triple the size of our science, technology, and engineering workforce. If we were to be three times as large, it still wouldn't be enough. It would not be enough from a national competitiveness point of view. Um, our... Um, Competition across the Atlantic Ocean is producing uh, STEM graduates at a faster clip. And so while we can't scale like they can, we're going to do our part. We're going to do our part uh, to provide highly qualified graduates who are able to solve complex problems that we see in every sector. And so I look forward to that. I look forward to telling those stories of actually being at the forefront of the conversation for St. Louis University. It does not mean that the other schools that exist will not be contributors. I just think that the school is going to be a change agent. I believe that the School of Science and Engineering is going to be an enabler. We're gonna be the center of collaboration. We're going to be an incubator for great ideas to come true. That's what I see in the future. That's what I hope for. And that inspires me every day. Awesome. So what are you doing to keep your STEM grads human? <laughs> you know, I was just on a panel, uh, the geo resolution panel, and it uh, turns out that AI is not good for everything. So, uh, so you can use artificial intelligence in a number of ways that helps you with decision making, but you still need humans. Uh, I, I always tell people, it's like, you know, artificial intelligence will not replace jobs. It won't. But people who do not have AI um, skills will lose jobs to student, to people who have AI skills. That's the difference. Uh, so yes, there's always a place for humanity. Besides, if in fact AI goes wild, somebody needs to, to turn the power off. So, so we have to have humans in control. <laughs> All right. Um, so someone who graduated in 1970 has asked about the civil engineering program. Can you talk a little bit about some exciting stuff going on there? We do. We still we we do have a very uh, robust civil engineering program. Uh, it's a little early, but we're thinking about adding structural engineering. Uh, and as you know, we don't have them, that many programs of structural engineering in the country. Uh, we just hired uh, two new faculty in civil engineering, I believe. And so we're going to be hiring more in this area. Now, part of the building that I propose, a section of that is going to be uh, increasing space for civil engineering. So it's alive and well. It's alive and well. We're, we, we, um, I, I would say the civil engineering is is one of the coolest departments because they build things and then they break them. And I, I find that to be the best experience if I were a student. So. That's great. Um, I think we've answered all the questions. So if anybody has any, type them in really quickly. Dean Triplett, do you have anything else you want to add? 
Yes, uh, I think we're going to send folks a uh, a survey following this, if we can. Uh, we would just like to know how you would like to connect. I think what you heard from me today are, you know, uh, uh, I guess it would be some of the things I wanted to highlight and there's a charge to you. But I mean, on the other end, this is this this conversation should be bi-directional. And so we, we we're looking for your feedback, you know, equally. And I think you know, it's really important for alumni to weigh in. We want to know what you're thinking, what you're saying. Um, we're not in this alone. So uh, let's let's work together. And I believe, yes, I see a, a, passion, a question pop up. We can share the PowerPoint. Perfect. You're doing my job for me. Thanks. <laughs> I saw a pop up. Yes. All right. Well, just want to say a huge thank you to Dean Triplett tonight for sharing his time and his vision with us. I hope it was insightful for everyone who tuned in from across the country. And uh, thanks for joining us. This is the kind of stuff we want to do to engage our, our alumni and our friends, and it continues to propel the School of Science and Engineering and St. Louis University to be a world-class institution. Um, I know we talked about it, but we look forward to seeing you all at homecoming. Um, the School of Science and Engineering is hosting an open house on Friday, September 27th, where you can go around and check out all of the cool labs that are open and walk and talk with um, faculty and staff here on campus. Um, we value your, your engagement and we appreciate you. So thanks for being with us and hope you have a great rest of your evening. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.